Hi guys, Ricardo here, CEO and co-founder of Weavee. So this session, right, is going to be about adding chat to your .NET app using our drop-in UI. But before the fun begins, we're actually going to start coding. Let's just talk briefly about what Weavee is. So Weavee is a frictionless, low-code API and SDK for any engineer of any skill level to add product impacting features in no time to any app. So what does that really mean? Well, for us, it means like if you're an expert, you can take our stuff and just rip it apart, use the REST API in the back end and, and build whatever you want. Or if you're freshly baked out of school and have HTML and CSS and JavaScript skills, you can still get it done using our low-code API and SDK. And I mean, I'm here doing this session and my professional development career is like decades old, but I can still get it done. And we know you guys are building apps like within medical or ERP or CRM uh, and that core offering you have. And what we are focusing on is adding features to those apps. And why we're doing that is like, it's our firm belief is that your app is where, you know, the place for work is where work happens. Uh, and we want to make sure that the users can do more within that app. So the features we are building and adding to your app are socially and productivity driven. Uh, all in the name of stickiness to make the user stay longer and get more work done within your app. That's what it's all about, to keep the eyeballs in your app. So the features we are focusing on or creating right now is to begin with activity feeds. So imagine having like a Facebook slash LinkedIn feed in your app with com, you know, mentions, threaded conversations, polls, and all that good stuff. Uh, moving on to document collaboration, and you can imagine having like a Google Drive within your app where you can edit, create, and collaborate around documents and files. And then lastly, like the chat function we're going to f f focus on today, which is a fully featured chat within your app with channels and attachments of files, or presence indicators, and all that. Uh, and again, our focus is like enabling you guys to add this in no time to any product, regardless of what's it built in and how it's built. Uh, that's like our, what we're passionate about. And you can do this in two different ways, right? So there is the drop-in UI, which is a JavaScript library. Uh, so you can add that basically to any app. And then we have the UI kits where we build native components, for example, in React using a REST API. So you can use that, add that to your project. What is true for all our like, you know, UIs, drop-in UIs and UI kits, they're all open sourced under the MIT license. So make them yours. You can grab them for free, do free stuff for commercial stuff. We don't care. Make it yours. That's the whole idea. Um, and in this particular session, right, we're going to focus on the dropping UI. Uh, so now it's when the fun begins and we're actually going to start, you know, coding, but we need to begin somewhere, right? So where we begin is to create a sandbox and that's super easy to do. You create the sandbox for our website. You just go to weavy.com and you sign up for free to get started, to set it up. Uh, so here you see me setting up uh, my account. And the next thing you do is to set up the actual sandbox. And you do that by setting a name for your sandbox. And I'm going to use MS Build. Uh, and then, you know, the sandbox is provisioned. So this is the fastest way to just get up and running. The cool thing with Weavy, though, you know, is that you can actually self-host it. So if you want to take our API and SDK and plonk it into your Azure or your on-premise or wherever you have it, you can do that as well. But this is by far the easiest way to get started. Uh, so now we have the sandbox up and running, right? So the next thing is to obviously start coding. So we prepared a repo on GitHub, uh, obviously. Uh, and then, so let's head over to GitHub. Uh, here I have it. This is the repo. Uh, I'll copy uh, this URL. And then I'm going to use Visual Code, uh, clone the repo, uh, put it on my desktop, uh, and clone it. So there we are, up and running. In this repo, you have a README file, so you can see all the steps you need to take. It's like four steps. And we already completed one. We have a sandbox, so that's great. And the next thing we need is to install the drop-in UI, uh, which is an NPM package. So I'm going to do that by firing up a terminal uh, and then make sure that you are in the demo host folder. And then we do npm install at wv slash drop in stash. Yes. So now we're pulling down that 
uh, into uh, our project. And as you can see, the next steps we want to do is uh, under the folder node modules, we, we drop in dist. We want to copy the files in the JS and the CS folder. Uh, so let's do so. So now I can, we'll go in here, we uh, dist, I'll take the CSS file and move it to the uh, CSS in the root here. And then we'll take the JS file and put it uh, in the JS in the root. So there we go. And back to the readme file. And now it's telling me I need to uh, update the app settings because uh, Weavy works with JWT tokens. Um, so you need a client ID and a, cli a client secret. Um, and you probably already have that uh, in your environment. So you can use that and you should use that. Uh, I prepared my own, obviously. So I'm going to go to app settings here. I have a client ID in place. And then I'm going to take my secret and put that in place. Uh, like that. And save. Okay, back to README. And the next thing we want to do is to add a reference to our backend, aka the sandbox we just created. Uh, so we want to do that in the J script JS file, and it's here, uh, and it's up here when we actually are starting or firing up Weavy. So ms build dot Weavy dot io. So now we basically have everything in place, but let's just work through what we have in front of us. So everything after login is obviously rendered in a view called home. Uh, which I'm not going to go into any details. Uh, but if you look into the script, yes, from the top to bottom, it's like we have, or also like with the, when it comes to the home, let's look at the home controller. So the home controller, like the login, you know, uh, workflow I've done in this project is just, you know, fake. So it's just like, you know, cookie uh, driven, uh, but it creates the claims and everything. Uh, and you can also see I created a dictionary here for some predefined users. Again, to just simplify it. But what's interesting here is to you know note, note is the directory. So in Weave you have different directories, and for you it's probably different organizations or projects or whatever that might be. Uh, and that basically correlates straight into Weave. Uh, and it's just a, an important concept to keep in mind. So you can lump you know users together in directory, and that means they can communicate with each other. And it's also true that the user can actually belong to several directories, so it can actually do cross communication. Uh, just you know, keep that in mind. And then you can see down here when we actually do the login, we're creating the claim uh, where we do put in the username and the directory and the avatar image and so, and so forth to create that uh, cookie authentication. And going back to the script.js file, uh, we then have the get token function, right? where we fetch it from slash token. Then we have the token controller here, and that's where we're actually creating, you know, our JWT token uh, and its payload. And here you can see we put in the directory, the username is so on and so forth, uh, and then we create uh, a new uh, JWT uh, based on the client secret, right? Um, and then after that, in there, we can see uh, that we are firing up Weavee with that backend being the sandbox we just created with the token we just fetched. And then after that, we are firing up the chat, the app. We call it apps. So in this case, we're creating a, a messenger app. And then we want to render that in a container called messenger container. And there's open false, batch true, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to go through that later. Um, and that's basically it. So let's just see how it looks like. So. Again, I'm going to go back into the terminal, making sure I am the demo host uh, folder, and then do .NET wrap. And that will build the project. Uh, and then when it's up and running, we can see now it's uh, listening here on the different uh, local host ports. Uh, use the HTTPS. Uh, that's a requirement from VB, like with the whole authentication and JWT tokens. Uh, so now I'm clicking here and it will take me to the, the app we just built. Um, and here we are, the app is up and running. So let's say we want to log in as 
Magnus. And again, the password doesn't really matter because it's cookie authentication. It's just, you know, for demo purposes. So let's sign in. Uh, I'm signing in as Magnus. And here we see a boilerplate. It's Twitter Bootstrap. It's just a boilerplate.net app. Um, and up here we have the, the Weavy Chat. So I can click here. There's nothing going on right now. Uh, so I can start by doing that, right? So if I click here on the plus, I cannot see, uh, you know, three users. And that correlates, like if you look in the home controller where, you know, three users belongs to directory A and three users belongs to directory B, that is exactly what we're seeing here. So let's say I want to create a room uh, together with John, Yuan, and Dave. Uh, let's create that. And say, hey, guys, what's up? Um, so now I've done that, right? So to see it on the other end, let's sign out and log in as Johan. Uh, and you see now we're logged in as Johan. And now you can see there's actually a batch saying like, I want unread a message. I can click here and now we see the room I just created. And yeah, we're up and running. So I can say, hey. And the cool thing now, like all the features are already in place. Like I don't have to do more. So if I want to attach files, like Weavy has built-in support for not only storing the files, but also previewing the files. So it's not just a simple, like, you, you know, hyperlink. Uh, seeing this question mark. And now you see we attached the PDF to the conversation. Uh, and clicking it, you can see it's previewing straight into the app. I don't have to do anything else. And we support like all the major formats, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, obviously, and so on and so forth. And you can also attach files from cloud suppliers. Like say I want to, you know, attach a file from Google Drive. Um, sure, I can do that as well. So I want to take this document, for example, attach it to the conversation and say, uh, read this, uh, please. And then again, just to show the different users, I'm going to sign out and now I'm going to sign in as Dave. Uh, and again, we have a badge saying we have one unread message. Here is the message coming in. And here's the can react thing. And I can react it, say like, that's great. And then obviously I can click on it. And even here we can actually preview files from Google Docs or Google Drive uh, straight in your app, which is pretty cool. Apart from like the files pieces and all the reactions and you have emojis and so on and so forth, uh, you can also do uh, Teams and Zoom meetings straight in the conversation. So I can click here. I need to sign out in just to you know, add my credentials. And when that's done, uh, let's, you know, let's meet. And then I post that. And you can see now it says start meeting. It adds like a card to the conversation and me who initiated it uh, saying like start the meeting. And again, to see it from the other side, let's sign out and log in as Magnus. And now we can see on the other end that for Magnus it says join the meeting. So now we started meeting, can you know join a meeting and have a meeting straight from this conversation in a context, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, other things you can do with, you know, straight from the client side is styling. So I just created a simple styling here in terms of adding blue to the app title or sand uh, to the app title or just go back to default, right? So you can do that on the fly. This is also true for uh, example, the dark themes, like your appearance in your, either your, your browser or in your, you know, in your operating system or your OS. So if we go back actually to the code, you can see when we fire up the app messenger or the chat, you see that we are referring to a CSS or a style sheet called dark theme, uh, which is in the CSS folder. And that actually have a media uh, condition saying, if it's a dark scheme, then do this. So let's try that. Like if we go back here and then in edge, uh, and then I'll search for appearance. Uh, you see here light and so on. let's pull it out like that. Let's open the actual conversation. And if I switch now to dark, you can see now, that the messenger or the chat is instantly changed to the dark theme. And then I can go back and go to system default. So that's pretty cool. And you can do that as you can see on the fly. Um, that's about it. This is a great boilerplate for you to play around with, to get started, play around with Weavy. You can see the authentication flow, 
how the token works, uh, how to style it, how to get it up and running. And it's super easy to do that through the sandbox, right? And uh, furthermore, like on our website, um, you find anything and everything you need. Uh, you have the extensive doc site where you can go through the whole front end, the whole back end, and all the things you can do and need to do. Uh, engage with our community. There's community, you know, connect with your peers, uh, ask questions, get inspired. And there's like a very rich knowledge base as well, where you probably, hopefully, will find all the answers you're looking for. And if you don't, just ask us any question. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little session. Uh, there's other videos you can explore where you learn more about styling and more about authentication, how to self-host VV so you can, you know, put it on-premise or you can set up in Azure. Um, and also how you can work with our REST APIs and UI kits in React. There's a lot to explore. So I hope you will and I hope you enjoyed it again and have a good one.